Thank you very much. Hello. I'm uh, Dr. Howell. It's good to have heard your talk. I really appreciated hearing this. I should like to hear more of you. Uh, because the more you talk, the more you convince me that there is a God and you crystallize our need for him. I'm glad I have some effect. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, as a scientist, I'm a bit disturbed that you would go on a tirade for 40 minutes against God and then begin talking of science as if to put the authority of science into what you said. But I do have a question about your long discussion about morality and it coming from the Bible and that you, you accuse people, I suppose Christians, of saying that we get our morality from the scriptures. Um, but clearly this cannot be the case because humanity from every civilization throughout time has a sense of morality and clearly most of them have, had not, have not had access to the Bible. So I'm curious then um, what you think is the origin of this morality. If someone comes in here with a gun and begins shooting all of us, we would call that bad. Why? Why well, is that bad? Um, I think we probably agree that people don't, as a matter of fact, get their morality from scriptures, and that's what I was actually saying. People get their morality from somewhere quite other than the, than the scriptures, uh, and to the extent that they do get their morality from the scriptures, as I was saying, they pick and choose. Now, if you're asking me where we get our morality from, I think that's an extremely complicated question, and one that I'm very interested in. I've got a whole chapter on it in the book, which I didn't have time to read from. I think that a sort of bedrock of it probably comes from our Darwinian heritage as a kind of misfiring byproduct of our Darwinian past when we lived in small villages or small roving bands, which meant that we were surrounded by close kin, and that, as you no doubt know, uh, is one good prerequisite for the evolution of altruism under Darwinian rules. And also, in those small villages or roving bands, we would have been surrounded by people whom we are likely to meet again and again throughout our life, which provides the basis for the other main Darwinian reason to be moral or altruistic. That, I think, is the Darwinian origin. And I suspect that, although we no longer live in small bands, the same rule of thumb, rules of thumb, which were honed in our Darwinian past, are playing themselves out under the alien conditions of modern urban society. The rule of thumb used to be, be nice to everyone you meet, because everyone you meet is likely to be either a cousin and or somebody you're going to meet again and again, and therefore in a position to reciprocate. Darwinism doesn't forecast, doesn't suggest that we should be all wise and do what is actually going to be best for our selfish genes. Instead, it says that it builds into our brains rules of thumb which worked in our ancestral past. That rule of thumb, be nice to everybody, is still in our brains. It is a lust, which is rather similar to the sexual lust, which is still in our brains, even though we may use contraception and therefore are not actually using copulation to reproduce. The same rule of thumb persists, and that is also true of the lust to be good, the lust to be nice. That, I think, is the Darwinian origin but I think that it's become modified and refined through culture, through civilization, until it shows itself in the much more sophisticated and actually much more pleasant uh, rules for being nice that we see today. Wherever else it comes from, it certainly doesn't come from scripture, and that was the only point I was trying to make from that particular reading. Yes. Oh, hello there. Oh, well, welcome to welcome to America. Uh, I, I'm, I've been reading your book. I, I've been reading your book, and I, I think you're a terrific writer. And I got to say, listening to you in person and that accent and everything, man, I just think you're brilliant. <laughs> but um, I thought that'd be about yes. I, I know. I know. <laughs> well, it, it's it's Lynchburg. Um, <laughs> Well, I, I, am, I am a theist, uh, you'll be disappointed to know, but uh, my, you know how uh, Bertrand Russell you know, said that uh, if he faced God, he'd ask, you know, where, you know, he didn't give enough evidence, where was the evidence and all that. Uh, a couple pieces of evidence that I, I would just kind of be interested to hear, hear what you think about. Um, pertaining to this uh, issue of ethics, I, I read this chapter on, on ethics in your uh, book, 
And I found it interesting. Um, I mean, you were dealing with the, the origin of our moral sense, more so than, I think, the origin of morality itself. You, you'd probably agree, right? Um, so, so, you know, you, you still wonder, what is it about the world that makes some things, you know, uh, right and, and some things wrong? Some things good, some things bad. And, and you know, you, you want to retain the language of, of some things are evil. And, and you give a lot of religious examples. And I'm, I'm in agreement with you on some of that, you know. Uh, but if we're going to retain these categories, these very strong, you know, m moral categories, it, it seems to me that naturalism is going to be very hard pressed to kind of provide an account um, for, for where real good and evil would, would be. I mean, um, I'm not sure how, how entirely we can simply assert the existence of value without providing a, a yeah. deeper account for it. And, and one other, moral freedom as well. Uh, it seems to me that if uh, the naturalist is kind of um, shackled, you know, I mean, a, a naturalistic world, it would seem as if we're just bound and determined to behave just the way that we do. Mor if morality is all about ought and ought implies can, how can we ever do anything other than exactly what it is that we do? So I'd, I'd be real interested in your responses to those things. Well, I think it's a problem for all of us. I mean, not, not, not just for naturalists. I, know, I think it is actually fairly baffling where our morality comes from and why we're, we're in fact as nice as we are. I mean, the professionals in this field are moral philosophers and moral philosophers, the majority of them, are, are not theologically inclined. I mean, they tend to develop ideas, the simplest of all, the one, the one we all know about is the, is the golden rule, be, behave to others as you would wish they should behave to you. And moral philosophers have developed other such principles, um, uh, always oppose suffering, um, always uh, behave as if you didn't know whether you were going to be at the top of the pecking order or the bottom. These are all moral precepts which moral philosophers have developed. Now, it's a genuinely difficult question why any individual should wish to follow such moral precepts. If I ask myself, I, I'm actually a very moral person, I think, and I'm sure most of you are too. Um, if I ask myself why I don't steal, why I pay my taxes, why I do the, all the things that keep society going, I suppose it's a slightly irrational feeling that I wouldn't wish to live in the kind of society where people behave in the sort of ways that I wouldn't wish them to, be, to behave in and therefore I shouldn't behave in those ways either. Now that isn't entirely rational because if I behave in an antisocial way then that doesn't actually stop anybody else doing the nice things to me that, um, well it, maybe it does and that, that could, could be the problem. But it is a genuinely difficult problem why we are moral. All that I wish to assert today is that um, is that religion certainly doesn't help. Or if it does, I mean, if there's anybody here who thinks that they're moral purely because they're frightened of what God might do if they're not, I mean, that's a pretty contemptible reason to be moral. And, and I don't think we pr probably have much respect for people who only behave well because of the great surveillance camera in the sky. Um, <laughs> so I think that, that, uh, that I'm sure all, all of us here are, are moral for, for better reasons than, than that, although I quite agree with the questioner, it's genuinely difficult to decide uh, why, why we are. Thank goodness we are.